What is going on everyone? Back with another video. So today is going to be one of my very first uh, um, kind of ramble videos, if you will. So knowing that, if you guys want to go grab a beer or you know something to eat or whatever, this is this may be a long one. I really don't know how long it's going to be, but this video is just a, kind of a um, kind of an impromptu video of how I got into knife collecting and also my journey as a knife enthusiast. And of course, you know everybody has to start from somewhere. And so I just thought I'd, you know, do a little bit of a knife show and also tell you a bit about how I got into it. Uh, so again, just sit back and relax. Uh, I really, again, don't know how long this is going to go on for, but let's go and begin. So in my hand here, this is a knife that started it all for me. And uh, it's not a knife that I actually bought. It was a knife that I found a long, long time ago as a child, believe it or not. I was actually uh, playing at a park and on my way home, I saw, like, I saw this sticking out of the sand like that. So whoever had this definitely dropped it. Now this is just a little cheap Chinese um, lockback knife. I think it's like a copy off of something, but it's, it clearly says Magnum right on the uh, blade here. And when I found this, I thought, hey, cool. You know, as a child, when you find things, you know, you're, you're, you're really excited because, you know, it's this new stuff and whatnot. And I didn't tell my parents because I know they'd be really mad if I, if I told them I found a pocket knife, you know, at the park. But uh, eventually I did tell them. And yes, they did get a little mad, but I, I told them like, like years after. And they're like, well, why, you know, why'd you keep it and all that? And so they, they actually blamed this knife for, for me collecting knives because, you know, my parents back then didn't want me to buy this kind of stuff and whatnot. And it wasn't until many, many years later that I could actually afford to start buying knives. And so this is where I started out with. And obviously you can tell it's been used and, and you know, it's edge is as dull as shit right now sorry excuse my language but it's just like there's there's no edge on it whatsoever but nonetheless i still have it and i don't think i'll ever give it up because again it is my first i know a lot of people say oh yes yeah, um uh, i had my first spyderco or like victorinox was my first this piece of crap was my first knife ever so uh leading in onto the years i went ahead and picked this up at a local knife shop and this is a sog pentagon elite and i featured this knife before uh, on my channel way way you know long ago i don't remember how many years ago but uh this is the original pentagon elite this is when they first came out and you know, i'll give you a shot of the blade here now i, ha I have sent this back to sog for for some spa treatment but um it is worn down you see it used to say pentagon elite right on the blade and you can see it's completely worn off but it's a real sog and look at this it's a liner lock this is before sog actually started using their arc lock system and uh, it's a very, very awesome knife. I really like. It. I love how the, the the blade just disappears into the handle. And uh, and at this at this point in time, uh, when I bought this knife, I think it was like eighty bucks or something like that. And this is when I went to the store to pick it up. I mean, imagine if I would have bought this online, it would probably would have been a lot cheaper. But I don't really think there's that many online retailers at the time that that, that this knife even came out. But and I, I think this might have been in like the the late nineties, possibly. I, I can't really remember. But uh, it was the most expensive knife I've ever purchased, <laughs> and uh, I, I was uh, I was enamored by it. I carried it everywhere. Uh, my girlfriend at the time was like, "Oh my God, you shouldn't be carrying this around." Which is like, "Hey, why not? <laughs> what 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 could possibly go wrong, right?" So it still works very well. I, I, I had to send it back for, because it started getting blade play, and you know it dulled up, and they, they actually sharpened it for me, and it actually sharpens a little bit on the tip. It's actually on the, t uh, on the top of the a blade here. See, this is all. This is all dull, but then when you get down to here, this is actually sharp. So it's very interesting uh, blade design. Now I know they got the newer Pentagon Elites that have like the the um, arc lock and everything. But you know, from this point on, uh, I actually stopped uh, buying uh, knives for a little bit because uh, you know my job was crappy and I didn't get a lot of money. So this is pretty much the only knife I had for many years after that. So it wasn't until pretty much recently, pretty much whenever my my knife channel started, uh, is when I started to really, really get into knives. And and you know what really pushed me over the edge for that. And actually, that's one of the things I want to hear from you guys, if if, if you would indulge me, you know, down in the comments or whatnot, is like, how do you really get the knife uh, start, or how do you get get started into knife collecting? And, uh, you know, what prompted you to do it and, and what kind of, you know, what happened, you know, that made the bug bit, bite you that you'll start, you know, start buying knives. And, and from that point on, you know, how it does it progress from like a, you know, from a well cheapie here, I'm assuming these are only like 10 bucks when they're new uh, to $70 and then on up. So, for example, let me go find another knife. If you guys can see my table right now, I got knives uh, all over the place at the moment. And uh, the one I need to find, oh, here it is. So. I went to something like this. Uh, it was really uh, weird because 
I think I bought two knives at the same time. It was this uh, Ken Onion Ripple right here, which is a very first IKBS knife. And I think when this was brand new, it was about 100 or 120 bucks. I can't remember. Now, don't mistake this. This is not the cheapo Walmart version, by the way. This is the uh, this is the pre-production, or I'm sorry, not pre-production. This is the first run. Oh, jeez, I think I just cut myself. This is the uh, this is the uh, first production run of the Ken Onion Ripple, and uh, it features the Akuto. Akuto steel, I think it was, and it has the first uh, IKBS system on there, and this is a badass knife to own uh, when it first came out, and it is lightning fast, smooth, it's lightweight. I mean, look how slim and trim this knife is. This with the uh, standoffs on it, uh, complete flow through design, and then the blade just swings out. I bought this knife and this knife pretty much at the exact same time. Many of you will notice, uh, will realize that this is, uh, or I'm sorry, <laughs> recognize that this is the 301 from Zero Tolerance. I don't remember if they discontinued these or not, but um, I managed to hold on to this one. I don't know. I may, I actually may sell it. I'm not too sure yet. But anyways, um, it's never been used, by the way. It's just a brand new knife. I don't have the box anymore. But, and this, I believe this knife right here was like a 200 and... $30 knife or something like that and back then I was like I remember I was uh, looking at it and I was like uh, I really like the design but you know should I really go for it I mean I just spent 120 bucks on this knife and now you know I'm gonna go for like a 200 and some dollar knife you know and I think it's somewhere around this era right here I just got bit hard by the by the knife bug you know I just like oh I gotta have it I see it I gotta want it and everything and then I guess the other question that raises is uh, at what point do you do you consider it as an actual obsession versus an actual enthusiast? Meaning that when I collected these knives, I collected them because I actually wanted them, I liked them, correct? But uh, pretty soon I was just doing impulse buys because I just wanted knives in general. It didn't matter how they looked and it didn't matter what they meant, right? Uh, and then, and that's kind of what this video is about is like the eventuality of what it is now. You guys know recently I've started selling off my line, all my knives and I've been trying to get newer, uh, you know, more custom made ones, more tailored to my needs and what I like. And, and, you know, and I think that's really what the evolution of a knife collector really is, is that you get to that point and you say, what the heck am I doing? Am I just buying knives for the heck of it? Or do I want knives to actually speak to me? And that's where uh, that and and you know that's where I'm trying to get into is wh what was the turning point for me. So and 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 at this point point uh, time in my life when I was buying these kind of knives right here, it was seriously like oh I see some I like and I'll instantly buy it right. And then I had, I still had a little bit of discretion right. But pretty much it, it kind of got out of control because you know when I was buying these you know as soon as I buy something I'll be right back on the websites again. I'll be looking around like oh what do they have and you know lo and behold if I can get this knife out of here. Look at this. It is a Spyderco Sage 1, I believe this is. And I also picked up the Sage 2 as well. Actually, it's funny because I picked up the Sage 2 first, then I picked up the Sage 1. But, you know, I got these knives here. And, you know, and they're part of a collection. Uh, and then pretty soon I was like, ah, oh, screw it. I picked up the Sage 3 when it came out. And then go figure, I went ahead and picked up the Sage 4 when it came out. And see, this is the kind of de definition I have for obsessive, uh, you know, collecting. So, and, uh, and I just could not stop myself. By the way. Let me get these out of the way. Uh, I'm running out of room on the table here. But, you know, and this is where the obsessive collecting came in. When I saw these, I was like, oh, God, these are so cool. And I, you know, these are all unused, by the way. They're pretty much just brand new. You know, th this has a bit of uh, discoloration from, from the storage, but this knife has never been used or carried. None of these have, actually. I've never carried any, any one of them, even though they're, like, great EC knives, you know. Uh, but I just kept on collecting them and using them. And I'm not using them, but, but just, just putting them in, in, in a, a safe storage and everything like that. And uh, I... You know, and, and it just got, it, it almost like got to a point where it was just kind of out of control, you know. And I know a lot of you guys who are actual knife enthusiasts, like real ones, would, would agree with me, you know. But, you know, as, as, as a knife collector, I have to, you know, progress sometime, right? And then afterwards, you know, for some, for some reason, I started getting into even more expensive and more... Um, kind of like collectible knives if I can find another one here like I started being obsessed with sprint runs where's one here here's a sprint run you guys may remember this this is the Bob Lum Tonto from Spider Co you know and and if it was a sprint run I don't care what the hell it looked like I was buying it it was just crazy what what I was doing you know some other um what is it honorable honorable mentions would be like the uh like the Limited edition tilt here. Here's a speed form. You guys, I don't even know if got anybody remember this knife here, the uh, um, Kershaw speed form, and uh, and oh, one of the one of my uh, 
gems in my collection is this, um, I keep on saying Spyderco, Kershaw to uh, Bolt. And I remember I picked this up from a collector uh, and I was so happy because they, they were looking for something else and they, they, they needed money. So they sold this to me at a very, very good price. I got an excellent deal on this. You can't find these knives anymore. If you do, they're probably, somebody probably knocked the price up to about $400. And, and you know, you guys can remember when these came out, they were not $400, you know, and there's a very good price for what they were. They were. And Kershaw was just on the cutting edge, ha ha ha, cutting edge of like just this, this technology where they do the composite steels and whatnot. And then from this point on, I thought, thinking to myself, hey, I need some more composite steels. So I started buying more and more Kershaws with composite steels on it. And it's like, wow, you know, this is just getting way out of control. You know, oh, here's another one up here. Uh, this is the um, limited edition uh, Benchmade uh, Gaucho, actually. I think they only made 300 of these. This, I, I don't remember if this was a Knifeworks exclusive or not. But anyways, this one's getting sold, by the way. It's already on eBay. It's being, it's, it's being bidded up on. So it was like, you know, over $200 now. <laughs> Um, but I didn't pay that much for it, obviously. But uh, just, just this, these, you know, and and I, I think at this point in time, I was kind of just, just losing sight of what a, a, a real knife collector is. I'm not a flipper. I don't buy knives to flip and and, and gain money for it. Uh, but you know, at this point in time, I was just kind of like, well, I'm just buying knives just to have them, you know. And of course, if it's a, if it's a limited uh, edition knife, then I'll be buying it, you know, and it's just, uh, it, sometimes it just doesn't make any sense, you know. Oh, here's another one. Here's a uh, Zero Tolerance CBCF for you guys. And it's just uh, getting into bordering on obsessive collecting, you know, and uh, and I think, uh, I believe um, Jim Skelton came out with a, uh, uh, a video about that, about where, where does it stop, you know, where does it really, really end when it comes to... Um, you know, quote unquote, collecting, you know, are you just collecting for the wrong reasons or, you know, whatnot. So this is the uh, one that I bought off of Jeff Juice. This is the uh, Spartaco Chris. And oh, hey, here's another one. Here's one that I, I may or may not be selling, not too sure. This is the LFTI, but Bench made one of the few liner locks that they ever produce out of there, you know. So then from this point on, where do you go, right? Because, uh, I mean, after all, I mean, this is, what, a bordering on a $300 knife. This goes into the 400 depending where you bought it from. This is gone. I actually don't know how much um, these were originally, but I was actually uh, <laughs> quite lucky to get my hands on, on a Chris here. And so, and you know, and, and funny thing is, while I'm buying all these knives, I'm always thinking in the back of my head, hey, I should just get into custom-made knives. I mean, geez, look how much money I've spent already, right? And, you know, my, my wife has been telling me, even Jeff, my buddy, has been telling me, say, hey, you know, you should sell some of your knives and actually get into real custom-mades, you know, whatnot. And, of course, did I listen to them? No. You know, I, I just kept on buying little knives here and there. And, and, then, and then at one point in time, I kind of broke the bank a little bit, and I, and I went for this knife right here. And this is the... Um, this is Chris Reeves Abenza 21 Tonto, actually. And, and why is it the reason I bought this? It's because it was a Tonto version. And at that point in time, uh, they didn't really have that many that were Tonto versions, you know. And I think about the same time, I think about this point first. This is a discontinued uh, J.G. Russell Achias. And I, I think, oops, I believe that when I, uh, when, I was, when I was figuring out which one to buy, I bought the Achias first. And I actually really, really like this. And these are actually kind of hard to come by these days, except for on the secondary market, because I think A.G. Russell said they ran out of materials uh, to make this particular model. So now they go one to the Achias too, and then they have the A.G. Russell frame lock, but they, they're not coming out with the original Achias anymore. Um, and after I bought this, I really liked it. And then they got me onto a whole frame lock. I love titanium frame locks at that point. And then I started buying everything titanium frame locks. It's just unbelievable, you know? And so I went, then I went to the Sabenza right here and I think at that point in time too I acquired I acquired a, a Strider PT and so then this really broke the bank because this is a $300 knife for something this small you know <laughs> it shouldn't be $300 but it was $300 knife and um, really loved it and then uh, my wife or it was my uh, fiance at the time uh, bought me a Strider uh, SNG uh, gunner grip and oh man, I'll cherish this knife forever. This knife will never ever leave my collection. Um, and also now I'm breaking the bank at the four hundred dollar mark. You know, four seventy five. You know, it's just like, and then it, it's just it's it just kind of goes to show you that 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 as you're collecting, you know, it sometimes it's just you got to step back and just realize what you're actually buying. I actually really didn't need this PT. What's the reason for me buying it? The reason for me buying it is the fact that I just wanted a Strider. And this is the only thing that fit the bill at the time. And I, and I saved my money up to buy this, you know. And then now that I have it, it's like, eh, you know, I could take it or leave it. But uh, as it... As it uh, as it seems, I'm actually going to keep both of these knives uh, just because I have a family of them. And here's my uh, 
here's my SMF right here, which I got for cheap. Let's put it that way. It is a real SMF, but uh, you know, the, the the person I bought it from just sold it to me for a very good deal. You know, considering how much these were, these are going for brand new and even used on the on the secondary market. So, but now here we go. We're breaking like uh, you know, if brand new. What are we breaking here? About the the 500 mark here. It's just you know. It's just crazy, you know, of, of the of the extent that I would have went for to, uh, you know, to buy knives. And then at this point in time, I'm still in the uh, real, uh, real big in the full knife. Now, I never really truly gotten to, to fixed blades, although I do have a few of them, you know. But it's a, uh, it wasn't. I think after this point in time, I uh, trying. Sorry, I'm trying to find a knife to pull out here. Uh, I started getting into um, where to go. Oh, here it is. I started getting into uh, automatics and especially you know after seeing a uh, uh what's the name again um uh, uh apophysis 7 or apophysis 7 his channel you guys remember him kirk uh i wonder whatever happened to the guy anyways um i saw his channel he had a, just the most amazing microtech collection ever hands down i'm sure there's some others out there but let's say a well-known microtech collection and i saw that and i and i hopped on the and what, what happened i got bit by the bug again i saw that i was influenced and i was uh, heavily you know uh, impression impression uh, impressed upon to buy these knives and because uh, you know he just made them look so good uh i went straight on to blade hq and you know as luck would have it i found this one this is a custom um well supposedly it was nicknamed a custom uh out the front from microtech this is the katana version with the uh, kind of the, the whatever the, what is this called heat fired or heat treated um, hardware and bronzed uh, clip and you know it's got the little heat fired as they called it on the blade a little fire design chisel ground one of the few chisel grounds that Microtech uh, actually came out with and and then from that point uh, the bug hit me again so what did I do I kept on buying these knives. And uh, and I at at one point I was on such a huge Microtech kick, you know, and if you guys can remember my uh, video from the four, I actually did a video of all of these uh, in the one video, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a little, a little bit obsessive, I guess, <laughs> you know. I had to pick up a camel version. I even picked up this one. This was the um, uh, the Blade H2 exclusive with the uh, Marfion signature on the back, you know. By the way, guys, uh, side note, I think I will be selling some of these Microtech. So if anybody's interested in Ultratech, uh, you know, let me know. Uh, I will be uh, uh, doing a sale video of them soon. I don't know when. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to be doing uh, uh, the ones I'm selling, that is, 225 shipped, and that's firm, by the way, no negotiations. These are brand spanking new. They have the original boxes and also uh, the sheaths that come with them that actually say, some of them say Microtex uh, on them, but they are the original sheaths because now they don't even come out come out with the with the uh, nice uh, ballistic nylon sheath. They just come with a little cloth bag similar to what uh, Benchmade does for their knives, you know. But anyways, back to what I'm talking about. So I was on a kick for these for a little while. And then at this point in time, I think uh, Jeff actually was talking to me and he goes like, you know what? You should really just sell your Microtech collection and just go for some real custom made knives. And uh, you know, and I started him and ha and I was like, yeah, I don't feel like it, whatever, right? And so what did I do? I went ahead and uh, I bought some more Microtechs. <laughs> I never learned, do I? So I started buying up all these. Uh, I started buying like like Macora twos. I bought like a here. Oh, here's one. Here's a um, SFM. This is the uh, manual version. I think this one's gonna go up for sale as well. Uh, haven't really decided. Have not really decided yet. But I love Microtex, you know. And 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 what and what is it all about? Is this because I watched a bunch of videos, you know, online, and that kind of influenced my decision on what to buy? And, and you know, we all do that, right? I mean, you guys can agree with me that we all do this to some certain extent, where we just watch those videos, like, oh my God, I got to have it, you know. And uh, it's a, uh, it's kind of um, I won't say it's like a waste of money, but it's it's almost like. Um, it's almost like it, it just feeds the obsession. And then, you, you know, you, you, even if you don't have the money to spend on some of the stuff, you'll find a way to do it. You know, it's almost like I'm, I'm actually like a crack addict or something like that. But I saw this Macora 2 and I was like, you know, I want this. You know, I, I, I've, I've had so many, uh, I have so many Ultra Techs. I wanted something larger. You know, I wanted something more, you know, collectible or whatnot. And so I bought a second one, you know, and then... At that point, I said, you know, I should have stopped. But no, I found this one also, and this one has the blued out titanium. And of course, Microtech charges like 
stupid uh, uh, amount of prices for these things, you know, uh, especially if you get something like specially done like that. And it's just like adds another, what, $700 on top of the actual price. It's just ridiculous. But I picked up three Makora 2s. These are kind of rare now because I don't think they're making a run of them anymore. I actually don't know if they discontinue these or not, but these are very, very nice knives. I really like them. They're huge. Look how big these uh, dudes are right here. And, you know, the only other thing that, that actually uh, rivals them is, of course, the Halo 5, and that's probably the only other knife uh, out the front that I have that's actually longer. And th you know, this is measuring with the uh, glass breaker, and you can see the uh, the Halo 5 beam comes out a tiny bit longer than the Makora 2s. Um, but then, yeah, I, I picked this up, and at this point in time, I just broke the God. What, how much are these? They're like 500 or 600. I think this was just under 600 dollars because as each year goes by, these kind of raise in price a little bit. So. At that price, this was like close to a six hundred dollar knife, you know, and, and it was just getting ridiculous. Cause, and then I think at this point, uh, my buddy Jeff again, you know, he's always uh, he's always looking out for me, you know, and he was he straight up said to me, he goes, you know what, if you're spending this much for a knife, you should really just stop, and then just go and get yourself a custom made knife. Did I listen to him? No, not really. I just kept on buying, just kept on buying more and more, you know, expensive knives, you know. And at one point, I did actually uh, get a custom-made knife. I can find it here on the table. I did pick this up, all right? So this is a uh, Jim Allen Three Sisters Forge uh, Beast Knife, all right? Big, thick knife, you know, and, and it's, you know, not even that big. Look at that thing. I mean, in terms of uh, overall uh, length, I mean, but it is a tank. Look at that thing for something this size. And this was 300 bucks, and, uh, and I was like, oh, man, this is cool, you know? And so I got my first custom-made knife. Well, technically, one of my first. Um, I also acquired this... Uh, Jared Price, uh, um, what's it called again? Friction folder, and and these are really nice, you know. But you know, funny thing is, at this point, it's it still didn't jar me to to, to realize that how many knives I've actually collected. You know, what I've shown so, uh, to you guys so far on the table is just but a little bit of what I actually have collected. And you, you guys have seen my collection videos, and uh, yeah, I have a, I have a ton of knives, and they are all going now. Well, most of them are going. I can't really say they're all going, but you know. Going from like limited editions and everything like that. Here's a Howard Beale, Bailey, whatever his name is, uh, Spiral Phoenix, you know, limited edition. Well, they don't come out with them anymore. I don't know if there was a limited edition, but they're discontinued because probably at that point in time, the single most expensive Spider Code to ever come out at it of its time. And I think these didn't really sell. So I got one at like a hundred bucks. Um, you know, I mean, really, I should have been buying these right here, you know, full. Customs. I mean, not even mid techs. I mean, with the amount of money I'm spending, you know, like some of these mid techs are like around the 300, 350, uh, you know, um, range. And, you know, at least you're getting a mid tech. You get into the, like the five, six hundred dollar range, and here you go. You're getting still more or less a production knife. So it doesn't really make sense. And I understand what, what uh, Jeff was telling me about, you know, and it's funny because in my mind, I somehow knew that that was just kind of the math didn't add up and it was just kind of wrong, you know, and um, I should really be going toward, um, uh, custom made knives like these, you know, but it wasn't until recently that I finally came to a revelation that, you know what, I should just stop, you know, and the knife that really kind of broke that mold for me was the Marty Young Ursus. I found this on, uh, uh, ACK, uh, Arizona Custom Knives, and I told myself, like, man, you know, I think I'm gonna go for it, because they had it on sale. This actually dropped in price a little bit, and, um, I was like, I was like, man, you know, this is really, really nice looking. I've never, I, I didn't know who Marty Young was, never handled any of his products, but I thought I'd take a chance, and boy, am I glad I did. He's now currently making a, a, another uh, custom knife for me right now. A, kind of, uh, I think it's a folding hunter he's making for me, but it's very special. It's completely different from what this is going to look like. Uh, you know, I won't say this is bland. This is perfect carry, perfect uh, uh, size, you know, 3.25 inch blade, uh, seven and a half overall, I believe, and it fits so well in the hand. And he's making another gentleman's uh, carry for me, but this one's going to be a little bit more ornate with some more work done on it you know quite a bit more expensive and i think this really what broke the mold for me because after speaking with marty i kind of got again so to speak bit by the bug for this time for custom made knives you know uh this is a bench made 7505 which i reviewed on my channel uh, recently and uh what and and one of my very first uh, dual action autos and i'm definitely keeping this into uh, in my collection here but uh but you know this is not a cheap knife either Okay, so I mean, Benchmade marketed this knife at like six hundred dollars for God's sakes. <laughs> um, luckily, the price got dropped. Anyways, um, you know, and and then you know you pay, and you know even look at this. This is even a production made knife. This is a uh, PXL. These are like at three hundred dollars, by the way, just for a production made knife. And and you know, 
Again, doesn't make any sense because I picked up this Marty Young for $355, by the way, from ACK, and this is $300. This is a full handmade custom. Like, no CNC, no computers were, were used to make this knife. This one, you know, again, it's just full production, and you know, and this is only like 55 bucks more than this knife. So, I mean, really, it did not make any sense for me to start buying or keep on buying these kind of knives. And um, I think my whole focus now and my uh, the evolution and what this video is all about is me going into full customs and uh, and you know, and I, I think I'm trying to get into more art knives, you know, more artsy knives. And you guys have seen these before by Mike Sanders, and it's just something that looks more from the traditional gray and black and whatnot, you know, because it's funny because my wife has always told me, so you know what, all your knives look the same. I'm like, no, they don't. It's almost like you know, when you're talking to your to your lady and you go, you know, all your shoes are the same, and you know, she gets all pissed off at you. She's like, no, they're not the same, you know, the different colors. They're, yeah, I wear this for whatever, and I wear this for, you know, and it's funny, I kind of understand now because I got all these knives, I know all the differences between them, and I know their name. I know what 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 uh, you know uh, materials are made of, you know. But yet, someone else who are not in the, who is not in the knives will say, you know, all your stuff looks the same. And so then that really kind of opened a new um, door for me. It kind of made me realize that you know what I think she's right. All my stuff do uh, you know do look the same, you know. And um, I, I just gotta you know I, I know this is kind of like a, another one of those kind of uh, gray titanium knives here, but. I started getting in, I wanted more color, you know, I wanted to get into more expensive stuff, you know, and, 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 you know, not just get stuck in this rut of just buying gray knives all the time. I love titanium fray locks. Don't get me wrong. This is a work knife for me, by the way. This is what I carry. I, I'm about ready to do a real review on this, you know, as soon as I get all my knives off the table. Um, God, Pohan just, Pohan can really make a real nice knife. Seriously. I, one of these days I might have to get like a dressier version of it and instead of like a working version like this one is. But I started, I started just, <clears throat> And, you know, and I think the milestone for me is this knife right here, obviously, uh, being one of the most expensive knives I ever bought. I will not discuss price with you guys, but the George Muller uh, Handmade Custom, just absolutely gorgeous with the pearl and everything. You guys saw the preview videos. And it is just, it is just amazing the, 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 the amount of work that goes into one of these knives. And, and this has really been a turning point for me uh, this, this year alone, of course, you know, where I'm getting into more of these art knives. And... After, after all this, and during this video, I've already had like two custom knives on order. You know, I got one from uh, um, uh, Marty, Marty Young, and I got another one. I'm, I won't announce it yet. It's actually already done. I just have to pay for it, and I have to get it sent to me, and I'll be showcasing that as well. But uh, when I saw this, I think this actually kind of kind of spoiled me. Cause, you know, I, I, you know, I'm going to take all these other knives out of the way just because it, I think they're kind of... Not to say they're not beautiful, but I think they're kind of getting in the way of, um, of the molar here. The molar just deserves his uh, <laughs> its own spotlight. But when I saw this, I was like, you know what? For years now, I've been buying the wrong knives. Now, is that is that is that a mistake? No, it hasn't. It's not a mistake because people, you know, you got to start somewhere. You know what I mean? And that's the whole point of this video is that that people have to start somewhere, regardless of whether you you know you start with like um, let's see here, you start with like a, a Spyderco. What is this? A ladybug? You start with a spiral ladybug, you know, with thirty, forty, fifty dollar knife, and you work your way up, you know. And and this is what I think what a true a true knife collector is all about is that you can see something and appreciate the beauty of it regardless of what the knife looks like. And then as your taste grows and changes, you start getting into different knives, you know. And I think this is what 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 sets the the true knife enthusiasts and collectors aside from like the uh, the, the the flippers and the people who are just you know. Uh, 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 just obsessive about just collecting and then selling, collecting and then selling, you know, because that, that's, to me, that just kind of means that, that you're just buying it just for the heck of it, you know, and you're not really truly appreciating the actual art and the handiwork that goes, even a production made knife. I mean, I kind of, I kind of, uh, uh, knocked this knife a little bit, you know, it, has, it is a kind of a production. It's like a semi custom production. I mean, there is some hand work done on it, I'm sure, but let's not forget, this is still a full blown production knife, you know, in a way. And while a lot of work did go into it, I, you know, I can still appreciate what this knife really is, even if it had a lot of machining done, even if it had like a lot of, uh, um, you know, CNC work and whatnot. People actually thought about this design and put it together. If I was to ever sell this, I would not try and make a profit off of it. You know, I would, I would try my best to, to keep the price around what I paid for it and then just get rid of it and then get something new in, you know? And, uh, and that's just, I think that's just my way of appreciating knives is that, um, you know, I do see them as an art form, and you know, even even like um, even as something like this. I mean, you'll I, I really can't uh, 
can't deny this is not the best looking knife in the world. I like the color and all that, but there really isn't anything going on for the Sage 3 bolt action here. And um, it's just, but again, somebody designed it and somebody took the time to make this, you know, and uh, and while again, most of it's machined, you know, it, it, it's just, uh, it's still a knife and it's still a, a nice, pretty piece of work of art, you know, in my mind. And everything in this video course is my opinion. Um, but anyways, uh, I decided to share this video. I, I rambled on long enough already. I better let you guys go. But uh, just to show you, um, you know, from where from where I started, the humble beginnings, to where I'm ending up with, and hopefully where my collection will continue to grow. So I do appreciate everybody's support and everybody watching my videos. Because again, without you guys, there would be no there would be no channel here. By the way, there'd be no me. I would not be talking to you right now. So um, I do appreciate everybody watching. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, and you know, if you guys want to comment on this video, please leave it below and let me know how um, you know how you guys uh, you know uh, feel about the whole knife collecting, the whole obsessive behavior versus you know true knife collecting and then also the evolution of and the, like kind of like your own self journey on knife collecting you know if you will so all right i'll leave you guys with that uh so uh, take care have a great day i will catch you guys on the next one